into the house of the Lord. So yes, it does matter even how you look in church. You ought to have a glad look. You ought to have a receiving look. You ought to have a receiving heart. The same day they were added unto the church, about 3,000 souls. Give me verse 42. I need all the way to 47. And they continued, which means you don't, you don't hit and miss. Can't, you, you can't just hit and miss this thing. You can't show up today and, and hope that church is going to Mount Olivet. I'm talking about Mount Olivet. You can't show up today and hope that Mount Olivet is going to do all that you need it to do today and then you don't come back until Easter. It doesn't work like that. Your church is a prescription. I mean, you're not just here because this is where you are. This is the church that God has prescribed to you. This is your prescription. Your prescription, and I can't tell you how many times many of us in this place have gone to the doctor and they gave us a, 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 a prescription with 30 pills and they said take the full prescription, but after you took two or three pills, you felt pretty good, so you stuck your prescription in the china cabinet or the medicine cabinet and five or six, because you felt good. You thought you could run again. You thought your pain was gone. You thought your uh, infection was cured up and you outside again. And next thing you know, because you're not taking the full prescription, you got a back set. And a back set is worse than the set that you were in before you got set. I mean, a back set is worse off than before you started. And that's how it is with those who will pop in Mount Olivet as members occasionally, God has said they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. Now that means apostle is the same as pastor. You just can't go to everybody's church. Sunday morning is your prescription at Mount Olivet. You want to visit the church, visit at 8 o'clock. Visit at 12 o'clock, visit this evening, but you got to stay steadfast in your own apostles' doctrine and fellowshipping. So, so, so don't run out of here saying, oh, I come in, I come in late and I leave early because I don't have time for that. A part of the prescription is fellowship. Because, wait, wait, because you might not get it through the choir. I know this male chorus has been singing today, but you might not get it through the male chorus. You may not get it through the sermon. It may be that God has somebody standing, ushering, or on the way out the door, or, or at the close of the service, to give you the right hug, to give you the right word. And so you got to continue with the word. You got to continue fellowshipping, and you got to continue breaking of bread. That is the word of God and communion. Not just communion, but it's the word of God because the word is the bread. Oh, God. And in prayer. Give me verse 43. And fear came upon them. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they were shaking in their boots. Fear also means reverence. And fear also means respect. Do you know people don't reverence God like they used to? You know, people don't respect the church like they used to. But it says they got it and then reverence and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Verse 44 says, and all that believed, you see that? That says not everybody's going to believe, but all that believed were together and had all things in common. Verse 45 says, and they sold their possession. All this is saying right here, selfishness went out of the window. My way went out of the way, window. My thoughts went out of the window. They sold their possessions, which meant what I'm wearing. And all of this has a lot to do with what I'm wearing today. I put this on in particular because it's really saying in this text that what we wear is not important. What we possess is not important. What we have is not important. It's not important that you got a tie on. It's not important that you got sipped dresses on. It's not important that you have your hat on. Nice hats you got, but it's not important. 
What's important? They got rid of their selfishness and their goods, and they parted them to all men. If I got it, you got it. If I have it, you have it. Verse 46 says, and they continuing daily. You know, you got to get it at church, and then you got to get it at home. You got to get it on your job. You got to have your own time, one accord, in the temple, and breaking bread. Look at this fellowship here, from house to house. They did eat meat with, their glad, with, with gladness and singleness of heart. And verse 47 says, praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. So, the point that I'm making here is, it does not matter how good the choir is. That's not what grows the church. It does not matter how organized the service is. That's not what grows the church. It does not matter how many points I give you in the sermon. That's not what grows the church. It's when the church, the body of Christ, receives the word of God and responds accordingly, the Lord adds to the church. So, so what is it that God is expecting of us today? What is it God is God expecting of Mount Olivet? One, he's expecting us to be a learning congregation. A learning. Notice, notice how early converts devoted themselves. They devoted themselves. In verse 42, they devoted themselves uh, to Bible study. They devoted themselves to, to studying the word of God. The English dictionary defined the word devote as they set apart time. They set apart time. Uh, they set apart a time for a special time for God. They set a, apart a special time for service. They set apart a special time to dedicate themselves to the Lord over and over again. And again, devoted means give up oneself. Do you know you can come to church every Sunday and still not have given up yourself? Do you know you can come to church Sunday after Sunday and service after service and still not be devoted? Because devoted means I've given up myself. I guess one of the best songs that ever was written was I give myself away. You cannot be devoted, not you, but we cannot be devoted to God until we give ourselves away. You give ourselves away. Give ourselves away. We got to give up our time. We have to give up our energy. We have to give up our, even our cultures and the particular things that we like. We have to give that up for the cause of Christ. The text says that, that the early believers gave up themselves to the study of of God's word through the apostles according to Acts. A growing church is a church where members are willing to give up a portion of their time and a portion of their energy for the study of God's word. This behavior shows that, that the study of God's word and being a Christian cannot be separated. Studying God's word and, and being a Christian, you can't separate the two. If you are a Christian, if we are Christians, we are to study God's word. May it be public, may it be private, may it be personal, may it be corporate. Christians will and should study the word of God. Listen to this. The spirit of God who lives within us is the spirit of truth. Somebody say the spirit of truth. The spirit of God who lives within us is the spirit of truth. Now the spirit of God will initiate the study of God's word and help us to understand the truth of his word. There are two major reasons for becoming a learning church. One is called maturity. 
Maturity is, has nothing to do with your age. Maturity has everything to do with your availability to God 